Last time we managed to set up our retrofit query so that now we can actually get data from the Elasticsearch server through uh, this query right here. Um, so now we're ready to set up our recycler view so that we can actually display the data. So we already have the recycler view inside of our layout. So we just need to, first of all, instantiate it. So let's go up here and do private recycler view. M recycler view is what we'll call it. And just attach it to its ID. So M recycler view equals recycler view, view, find view by ID, R to ID dot recycler view. And just to make sure, because I know I did it a few videos back, I have the recycler view dependency in the build.gradle file right here. So add that if you didn't add it. So the first thing we need to do to set up the recycler view is to build the adapter. So let's go into our utility package, right click, and we'll create a new Java class. And we're going to call it a post list adapter. And this is going to extend, actually before I even extend anything, I'm going to create the view holder class inside of it. So I'll go public class view holder and do extends recycler view dot view holder. And inside the view holder class, we're just going to have an image view widget. So uh, M post image is what we'll call it. And then we insert our constructor. So get the constructor and that will set the image. Also inside of our view holder class, we need to specifically set the size of the image view widgets. If we don't, for, I'm not sure why, but it seems to slow down the performance of the scrolling like significantly. So I'm going to set them, set them uh, manually. So we'll set the grid width, grid width equals, oh, I need the context. Uh, so maybe before that we'll, we'll work on the, the main class up here. So do extends, now that we have our view holder, we can do recycler view dot adapter. And then inside here we can do post list adapter dot view holder. And now we can implement the methods. There we go. And we also are gonna need our default constructor so that we can pass the context and all that stuff. And I'm gonna move the view holder. I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna move it up to the top here. And at the top, so we need uh, private, or we need a log, so we'll just do log t. And we're gonna need the context and a couple other things. So private, static, final, integer. We're gonna set the number of grid columns. So number of grid columns equals three. And then we also need the array list for the posts. So array list of the post objects, so m posts. And then we need the context like I just mentioned. So context m context. And then inside the default constructor of this class, which we don't have yet. So I'm going to put that below the view holder. So right here and just do um, insert the default constructor. Uh, do we need? Yeah, we pass the posts. And I'm going to switch the order of these. I like to put the context first. And there we go. So now that we have the context, now we can go in here and, and we can manually set the width. So integer grid width equals m context dot get resources and then get display metrics and we can get the width pixels. Then integer image width will be the grid width divided by the number of grid columns, which we've defined above. And then we can do m post image dot set max uh, height to image width and then also m post image set max width to image width. That way they're going to be exactly the same height as they are width. In other, in other words, they'll be squares. That will ensure that they'll be squares. And for some reason, like I said, if you don't add this bit of code, it really slows down the performance. I'm not sure what it is. Something about the sizes of the image view widgets. Uh, not 100% sure. Haven't looked that much into it. Okay, so moving on. Now we're going to go down into our uh, onCreate view holder and we need to get the view. So view view equals layout inflator, layout inflator dot from and pass the context and then do inflate r dot layout. And I didn't build this layout yet, but I'm, I'm going to call it layout view post and do parent and then false. And I should actually close this to give us some more space. So I need to build that layout still. So just, just hang on with that. And we're going to return the new view holder and pass that view. That's red because this is red. Okay. 
So now onto on bind view holder. Um, so in this section is where we actually assign everything. So we only need to we only have one widget, which is an image view widget. So essentially, all we need to do is set the image view widget. So I can do universal image loader dot set image, and then we're going to pass m post dot get the position, and then get image, and then pass the widget. So holder dot m post image. And that's all we're going to do. Uh, in the future, in not in this video, but probably in the next video, we're going to attach an on click listener to the image view widget so that when the user clicks the, the, the image view, it pops up to another window and gives more details about that post. But for now, we're just assigning the, assigning the picture. Oh, well, I mean, I guess we can attach the on click listener. We don't have to really do anything. We can just say set on click listener, new on click listener, and then go log the uh, selected uh, post. That's it. We won't actually do anything yet. We're going to write this code. So to do, we're going to do that later. Uh, so now let's go down to this get item count method, and we just got to return mpost dot size, and that's going to be it for the start of our recycler view adapter class. Uh, we just need to build our layout for each one of the posts now. So let's go and create a new file, a new layout resource file. Whoops. So layout. We'll call it layout view post and change this to a relative layout. So as I mentioned, this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to literally put just an image view, do match parent and match parent in here and give it an ID of post image. And what else do we need? We need to set the scale type. So scale type to center crop. And we'll do center in parent true, although that doesn't shouldn't really matter. Uh, this we could change to wrap content and this to wrap content. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's it's gonna be pretty simple. Just literally an image view widget, and for some reason this is still red. What do we got here? So image view. Oh, because in our view holder we have this image view. We're not passing the image view. We just say m post image equals image view, and then item view, item view, find view by id r dot id dot post post image. There we go. So that should be good. But I'm still seeing some red uh, up here. Oh, need to close this off. There we go. Okay. So there is our adapter. Now we can go back into search fragment, and we can create a method for setting up the adapter. So I'll go private void setup posts list, and it'll take nothing and return nothing. And we're going to be using a grid, so we can use a grid layout manager and go grid layout manager equals new grid layout grid layout manager, and do get activity, and then do we need to pass our number of grid columns. So I'm just going to copy that constant from up here, and post it up here, and then so we pass our number of grid columns. So Oops, num grid columns. Then we do mrecycler view dot set layout manager and set it to our grid layout manager. And do we need anything else? I think that's it. And then uh, we also need our adapter. So let's create our adapter object up here. So private post list adapter. I'll just call it m adapter. And then do m adapter equals new post list adapter post list adapter. And we're passing just the context. I think that's all we pass. Uh, oh no, we need to pass the list also. So m posts, and then we do m recycler view dot set the adapter to our adapter. And there's going to be a couple issues with this. Uh, number one is recycler views don't have any like default way to set the distance between columns. So we're going to need to actually create a, a class just for that. But what I want to do is run it first and get you to take a look at it and then we can see the problem and then we can fix it. So let's call this method setup post list down here after we get all of our posts. So let's see. So after we get all of our posts right here. So setup post list. Okay, let's run it and take a look. Okay, so I just want to change some of the filters. Uh, oh, there's no filters pretty much. Okay, that's good. I want to make sure that I can find all the posts. So let's just hit return. And there we go. So it's getting the posts. Uh, it's taking a little while to load. It looks like a little while to get the images. 
there we go. So you can see that the image view widgets are not the right size. They're not squares. You can see that they're kind of long rectangles. So we need to fix that. That's for one thing. And you can also see that there's no spacing in between the image views. Uh, so we also need to fix that. So to fix this square issue, I'm actually going to create a class and call it uh, square image view. So go into the utility package, go to, and call it square image view. And we're going to use this to set our images to. So it's going to extend the image view class. And I just need to insert all the constructors. I'm going to insert, uh, I think all of them is what I want. Sure, let's insert all of them. And then below this, oh no, not this one. This is the one we don't want. So all those ones, and then we're just going to insert an override method. So control O and insert the method called on measure. And what we want to do here is pass the width for each one of these. That will ensure that the image view is a square. So now that we have our square image view class, this is what we're going to use instead of this image view inside of our post list adapter. So I'll create a square image view widget and change that to a square image view. And then also change this to a square image view in our layout file. And there we go. So that, that will ensure that it's a square. And now we need to create another class that's going to help us um, get spacing in between the items in the list. So right click on the utility package, go to new, and this is going to call, we'll call this a recycler view margin. And so the reason we need to make this, when you're using list views and list adapters, they, they have default methods for uh, inserting column width and all that, but with a recycler view, they don't have that. So you have to make that custom. So uh, let's create some variables, private, final integer, we'll say columns and private integer. Oh, and we need to extend recycler view dot item decorator and now insert a constructor, select both of those. And now down below here, we're going to insert an override method called get item offsets right there. And inside here, we can delete the super and we just go integer position. So position equals parent dot get child layout position and pass the view. And then we can do out rectangle dot right equals margin and out rectangle dot bottom equals margin. Oops. And then if position is greater or is less than columns, then we do out rectangle dot top, oops, dot top equals margin and scroll down a little bit here. And then also if, if position remainder columns equals zero, then we can do out rectangle dot left equals margin. So what this is doing is it's saying no matter what, pretty much the, the, the rectangle on the right and the bottom is going to have a margin. And then there's conditions for whether the top or the left will have a margin. And those conditions are based on the position. So if say, you know, we have three columns, if you're at the end, then the conditions are different. Okay. So let's go back into search fragment and we can add uh, a decorator to our recycler view to add those margins. So let's go up top here and just go recycler view, recycler view, um, margin, we'll call it item decorator, item decorator equals new recycler view margin. And we can pass our, we need to create some global variables actually. So, so private static final integer, and this is going to be grid, whoops, int grid item margin equals five. This kind of a small, a small uh, five DP margin. Where am I? Here we go. So grid item margin, and then we pass the number of grid columns. And then we can do recycler view dot add item decorator, and then we can pass the item decorator. And there we go. That will add those grid columns. So that should have fixed both of our issues that we saw. So let's run it and take a look to make sure that they're spacing and now that they're square. Okay, let's perform a search. There we go. So now we have our spacing and the image views are square and notice it loaded much faster this time. That's because of the universal image loader. It caches images. So it loaded much faster. And if we scroll up and down, we notice our, t our collapsing toolbar is working properly. 
And so everything is looking good at this point. And I just wanted to actually take a second to mention that I know some people were saying um, that this is a bad way to, to add search filters. So to let the user enter a city, a province, and a country on their own. And I know that, of course, is not a good thing to do. But this app was meant to demonstrate elastic search functionality. Uh, for me to add like a bunch of spinners and uh, incorporate different countries and different states and cities and provinces, that's like that's a ton more code. What you should actually probably do is integrate Google Maps and you, and get the cities, countries, and states that way. But this course is not on that, so I'm just going to have them type it in. So just kind of an FYI, that's why we're doing that. And so I guess now we're ready to move on to the next part, which is going to be when a user makes a search and they have some options. So when we click these, it will actually open up to another screen and they'll be able to get more information on the post. Just like in the demo application, if I click on a post, it brings me to this other screen where we can get some details about the post. So I'll see you guys in that next video.